we need to understand. There is close-hand theology and open-hand theology. Close-hand theology is the things, man, we just don't debate on, okay? These are, these are going to determine whether you get to heaven or not. It's the sovereignty of God and the heaven, right? We believe in the Trinity, one God, three parts. We believe in God the Father, God the Son, which is Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, right? We believe Jesus was fully God and fully man, born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, died three days later, rose from the grave. And the only way to get to heaven is through the blood and the forgiveness of a resurrected Jesus. You can't get to heaven because you work your way to heaven. You can't get to heaven because you're good enough to get to heaven. You can't get to, go- get to heaven because a pastor gives you a reference letter. You only get to heaven through Jesus, right? But there's open-hand theology. This is where denominations come in, right? Where people believe different other things, right? Not, not the heaven stuff, but they believe other things. They, they'll have open-hand theology based on uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit and what that looks like today. You'll have people have differences on when Jesus comes back a second time, what are the events going to take place? It's going to happen before Jesus comes back, during Jesus coming back, or after Jesus comes back. Debate. Creation is another one of these things. You know what we do is a lot of times is we try to take some of this open hand stuff and put it into the closed fist. And this is where you get religious wars. It's where you get arguments. And this is what we don't realize. You can believe something different than me on the open hand side. Doesn't mean we enemies. Because we all going to go to heaven together and celebrate. And then we all going to realize we were probably all wrong about a few things, right? Like, like, hey, okay, yeah, I got that one wrong too. And this is why churches don't have as much impact in their communities. Because Jesus said a kingdom divided among itself will fall. And so we spend more time competing with other churches instead of completing other churches. And we got to be the body of Christ, right? And not amputate parts of the body, okay? So here's what I believe. I believe the earth is older than just 6,000 years. I believe Jesus and I believe God has the ability to create in six days, but he probably spent a little bit longer doing it. I don't believe in evolution the way science says, where it comes from a single cell and turns into a complex being. I believe that God created things. Now, I do believe there are a form of evolution. We see that with, with species, that they adapt to the environments they live in to survive, right? So you will see species living in different areas of the earth, and there are slight adjustments and evolutions to survive. Humans even do this. Humans that living in different parts of the earth have this, humanity, this adaption to survive. And here's the most important thing. I believe God created Adam and Eve. I believe he formed them with his hands. I believe he breathed his breath into their lungs. And I believe we as humans were created in the image of God. Were the genealogies different? Was was it just a lineage? That I don't know. But I believe God created Adam and Eve. And that's my beliefs, okay? And if you believe differently, we're going to celebrate in heaven together. Amen? Because here's what I want to get you to understand. The most important thing. Number three. Why did God give Genesis to the people of Israel? This is why he authored the book of Genesis. These are people, 400 years of slavery. All they've ever known in the generations before them is slaves, less than people, oppressed. They have no sovereignty to themselves. They've been indoctrinated with a false gods and false belief system and false views on themselves, and they've been in a pagan government. And when God comes on the scene, he starts out doing something very specifically. He brings 10 plagues to deliver the people of Israel out of Egypt. Now, a lot of people think the 10 plagues are just coincidences. They're not coincidences. Each one of the plagues were specifically crafted by God to prove that the gods of Egypt were false gods. Don't believe me? Let's take a look at this. When he first brings the plague, the Nile to blood, the whole purpose was to attack some of the gods. You have the god of the Nile. You have the goddess of the Nile. You have the guardian of the Nile. He's proving you guys aren't legit. I'm the legit god. When he brings in the frogs, there was a god that had a frog head. When he brings in the gnats, it's a swarm coming from the desert. It's the god of the desert storms they're going against. When he brings in the flies, there was a god that had a represented by a fly. When he brings in the death of the life, stalk. It's against the false god of the, with a cow head, the bull god, and the, which is the symbol of fertility. He's bringing it in. When he brings it against the boils, it's against the goddess of 
over diseases and pestilence and the healing goddess. When he brings in the hail, it's against the sky goddess, the crops and fertility god, and the god of the desert storms. When he brings in the locust, it's against the false god of the sky goddess and the crops of fertility. Darkness is against the most powerful god that Egypt served, Ray, the sun god, also a sun god, a sky goddess, and another sky goddess. And when he brings in the death of the firstborn, it's against the false gods of reproduction, the one who attended to women's childbirth, the goddess who protected children, and most importantly, Pharaoh believed he and his son firstborn were gods. Every single plague was to try to drive into the hearts and minds of the people of Israel. You are not nobodies with no gods. You are people with a heritage. And every plague would rise their confidence. Our God is the true God. He's the living God. He is the real God. He is the God that is the creator. He is the God that is the sustainer. He is the God that is the provider. He is the God that is the protector. We thought we were nobodies with a nothing. We thought we were slaves less than. And we didn't realize we have a God that is for us, a God that is real, the one and only God. That's what it was in purpose. Now while they're in, Egypt, in the wilderness, what God starts doing, he starts pinning their origin story. He starts talking about Adam and Eve. He talks about Noah. But he's mainly writing and authoring the story of a man named Abram. Abram is what is known as the father of our faith. And watch what he starts pinning. He's writing this to the people of Israel who are just now freed from slavery. Watch what he's doing. He's writing them an origin story. He says it like this. To Abram, leave your native country, your relatives, your father's family, and go to the land I will show you. I've got a place for you. I will make you a great nation. See what he's telling the people who feel like slaves. No, you're a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. Do you understand? This is a whole sidebar. We get blessed to bless others, okay? Okay, that's the whole point, all right? I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with co contempt. All the families of earth will be blessed through you. Watch this. So Abram departed as the Lord instructed, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left. A 75-year-old man picks up everything and starts chasing after the call of God that he speaks to him. And he's not only a 75-year-old man, he's a 75-year-old man with no children. His, him and his wife had been barren all those years. Two chapters later, three chapters later, watch what it says. Then the Lord took Abram outside and said to him, look up into the sky and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you will have. And Abram believed the Lord and the Lord counted him as righteous because of his faith. He's writing this to a group of slaves telling them that are now freed, listen to me, you're going to have descendants as numerous as the stars. You will have a nation that is your own. And he's telling them, Abram was blessed because Abram believed and trusted in me, the one and true living God. And he's telling them, you need to trust and believe in me because I still have a covenant for you. I still have a promise for you. I still have a blessing for you. He's authoring their origin story here. Two chapters later, fast forward 24 years. Watch this. When Abram was 99 years old, still no children. Could you hold on to faith for 24 years? 24 years at 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. I will make a covenant with you by which I will guarantee to give you countless descendants. At this, Abram fell down on his face on the ground. 24 years he's been serving God. 24 years the same promise. 24 years God says, I'm still going to give you a kid. I'm still going to give you a kid. And watch what happens. Then God said to him, this is my covenant with you. I will make you the father of multitude of nations. What's more, I am changing your name. It will no longer be Abram. Instead, you'll be called Abraham, for you will be father of many nations. I will make you extremely fruitful. Some of y'all have been on 24, and you don't realize a name change coming. You're ready to give up, but God said, I'm about to change your name, because I got a plan for you. I got a promise for you. You once thought you were an Abram, but you forgot you were an Abraham. They're a father of many nations. I'm about to birth the dreams I placed in your hearts and minds if you don't give 
up. He goes on to say, your descendants will become many nations and kings will come among them. I will confirm my covenant with you and your descendants after you from generation to generation. This will be an everlasting covenant. I will always be your God and the God of your descendants after you. I will give you the entire land of Canaan where you now live as foreigners to you and your descendants. Listen to me. This is a thousand years before the people of Egypt or Israel are freed from Egypt. So God is writing this and he's telling them, you thought you were slaves. You didn't realize there's kings and royalty in your bloodline. You thought you were aliens and orphans and wanderers and you didn't realize I got a nation for you. I got a land for you. You are a many nations. You will be a blessing to the world. You will establish yourself. You thought you were less than dogs you thought you were meat and you didn't realize you were kings and royalty in my name and some of y'all need to get that in your spirit you are not less than there is an origin of something more in your heart and mind because this is the purpose of Genesis and most people miss it God's purpose of Genesis was not just to deliver them out of Egypt but to drive Egypt out of them he didn't just want to physically get them out of Egypt. He needed to get the slavery out of their hearts and minds. He had to write the story and tell them where they came from. And can I speak to somebody right now? Because some of you are physically delivered from your sin. And you're heaven bound. But you're still crawling there like a slave. Some of you are forgiven because... There ain't no work you can do to get that forgiveness. Only Jesus can give it to you. But you still got that poverty mindset. You still got that scarcity mindset. You still think you'll be nothing more than what you've always been. You still are chained to the addictions and the bitterness and the hurt and that false mindsets that have kept you a slave. And God's trying to tell you, you got royalty in your bloodline. You got a promised land I'm taking you. You are a, a, a powerful influence in this world. The world will be blessed when you walk in your purpose and your calling and you get out of that slavery mindset and you start walking as a son and daughter of the Most High King. It's exactly what God speaks to Paul when he writes Romans and he, Paul says it like this. You've not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you've received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. You're not a slave, you're his own child. For now we call him Abba, Father, for his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs to God's glory. But if we are to share in his glory, we must also share in his suffering. You know what he means here? You got to die to yourself in your old way of thinking. So you can resurrect into the way an heir thinks dreams, and lives. I wasn't planning on sharing the story. I'm going to end with this and I'm done. Last night when I was studying and praying, I felt like God told me to I've had a lot happen to me the last three months. My whole, my whole life got flipped upside down. At least it felt like it. For Christmas, I asked Amanda, I go, hey, hey, I want, I want an ancestry DNA kit. I want to get the whole thing. I want to do, build my family tree. I, I want to get the whole thing. So she got me the kit, and, you know, I do the whole thing, and I send it off. And I actually get my results in the last day of 21 days of prayer. Saturday mornings, I'm laying in bed before I get up, and I see, I see the email, and it says, your results are in, and so I'm excited. I click on the email. I start looking, and I'm connected to my mom. No connection to my dad and his side of the family. 38 years of my life felt like a lie. I mean, I'd always had doubts. My dad didn't claim me until I was three years old, kept telling 
my mom, I wasn't his kid. My mom always told me that story. My dad used to always make jokes that I was the mailman's kid. My mom had boyfriends. My mom always said I was a pill baby. I used to always think, well, I don't look like my dad. And I don't look like his family. But I didn't know if that was just insecurity speaking. And then it all comes to true. All these thoughts start running through my mind. I start thinking, no wonder he never wanted me. No wonder he didn't fight for me. No wonder why he don't even try to have a relationship with me now. He didn't, he, he, he didn't value me. And I started thinking, that can't be true because I adopted my children. And I fight for my children. And I love my children. And I, I desire my children. But you have all these wrestling thoughts that you feel like you're less than and you're not enough. And then I had somebody speak a scripture over my life that just, well, not over my life, I heard him speaking and it, it really impacted my life. It's Psalms 49 verse 1. The Lord called me before my birth from my womb. He called me by name. It was like God was just screaming that into my soul. Your conception was not an accident. The world may say it was, but it was not. And God created me for a purpose and a plan and put me here. I've, I, I, I've since discovered my biological father. He passed away in 2005. I'll, I'll never meet him. But it is weird looking at a person and a picture of someone that looks just like you when you thought your whole life you didn't fit in. But I'm reminded by God I always fit in in his eyes. And I feel like God wants me to share this with someone. I feel like some people feel like they're, they're accidents and mistakes. You might feel like you're less than. You may feel like you are a slave and not an heir to God. Listen to me, do not believe the lies that keep you from the truth. I don't care how you were raised, I care who you were created to be. And even before you were born in your mother's womb, your God called you by name. And some of you need to understand how God sees you and quit living the slavery lifestyle and start walking with your head held high, covered in God's grace. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring and ding that bell so you never miss a video or a live stream, and give this a share to one of your friends. And remember, we go live every single Sunday. Till next time, pray God's peace.